Today, I want to compare performance of Windows 11 running directly on this mini PC and uh, running the same Windows 11 on the same mini PC, but as a virtual machine on top of Proxmox VE hypervisor. And uh, I can tell you already that some results were pretty unexpected, but you will see shortly what I mean. We already know how it perf performs while running directly on Asus NOC 15 with that Intel Core Ultra 5 225H processor because I tested it when the, when this Nuke first arrived. So today I will just run the same tests, but now with Windows running as a VM on Proxmox, so we can compare previous and current results. And uh, we will check uh, CPU performance, uh, disk speed and uh, GPU performance mainly. We can expect of course that uh, some results might be a little bit worse while running on Proxmox, but how much worse can they be? And uh, that's what I wanted to, uh, to find out as well today. So for CPU, I used host type of CPU when configuring the VM, because that setting should have the lowest overhead and it should give me the best performance. And anyways, regarding the CPU settings, there is one more thing I wanted to mention. By default, in Proxmox 8 or newer, you will see the AES type of processor chosen by default, and that setting is not bad. But if you run older Proxmox version, like version 7 or older, you might see that this KVM64 version of processor was chosen for your, virtual, for your Windows VM. And if that's the case, you need to change it to something else. And what you have to change it to, it will depend on the type of CPU you have there, so please see this link, I mean it's not my link, it's external one, but it's very good. So basically you will know what to do next and which CPU to use. Basically, Windows released an update that will make your KVM version of CPU painfully slow, so you have to change it, okay? But that's just a side note. As I said, my CPU is the type of host, and fortunately for me, this NUC 15 has all the, the newest features, I mean the CPU-wise, so my Windows should run fine with that setting. So these are the settings that I used exactly. As you can see, I have 48 gig of memory here, and previously I had 64. Basically, this mini PC has 64 gig of memory, but I heard that you shouldn't use all the memory I mean, you shouldn't assign it fully to one VM. I heard it's better to, to assign slightly smaller value, because if you assign all memory that you have to a VM, your performance might actually be worse. So if I had 64 gig, I might have worse results than assigning just 48 and leaving the remaining bits for Proxmox itself. And of course, worth to, worth to mention, this Windows is the only virtual machine running on this Proxmox. I assigned all processors though, it's 14 core processor Ultra 5 and all processors are assigned to that VM. The BIOS type UFI, the display, it's the default display. That means I didn't pass through my graphic card. So the difference will be huge here. When it comes to GPU, we, we will compare two different things. We will compare previous results that were running directly on my Intel Arc 130T GPU and here we are going to have emulated GPU, so basically my processor <laughs> will emulate very basic GPU. So we can expect huge difference in those tests, but the CPU and the SSD drive, I expect the results to be pretty close to what we used to have in a previous test. So now on the left, we've got the previous results when, when Windows was running on bare metal, and you can even see it. When you check the GPU, it says Intel Arc 130T GPU, and on the right, the Geekbench uh, says <laughs> there is no compatible compute devices found. And I will try to pass through this GPU, but it's pretty new, you know, that's 130T, pretty new model, so I might have to fiddle with that to make it possible, but please stay tuned. I might release a video on how to pass through this 130T GPU uh, pretty soon. Now the memory, on the bare metal we used obviously full 64 gig, here we used 48 gig in that VM, and you can also notice that uh, it's detected as DDR3 RAM, while in fact it's DDR5. And then the processor, because we used host type of processor, it's detected exactly, it's detected correctly basically, it's the same processor type. And now results, again on the left, previous results, when Windows 11 was bare metal, installed directly on mini PC, and on the right, results from the VM. Interestingly, as you can see for a single core, we have slightly higher result when running Windows as a VM. But for multi-core, the score is slightly lower. As I said, type host of CPU has very little overhead, and we can see it. 
we can expect close to native results, but in fact even here, for single core, we have higher score. And the GPU, previously we had 36,000 for OpenCL, for that Intel Arc 130T, but because now we emulate basic graphic card, the Geekbench will not be able to run the test, because it says no compatible compute device found. And now the Cinebench, this time the single core is basically the same, let's say, but multi-core is higher now for Windows running in a VM than it was bare metal. But one of you guys rightly pointed that uh, when I pasted the HW info results, this processor seems like it can throttle a bit when running Cinebench test for multi-core. So I believe that's the case here. Maybe it throttled a little bit less when running as a VM, Maybe it's a little bit colder day or something, I don't really know, but I guess that might be the case. So we have 960 when Windows is running as a VM on Proxmox, and we had the 929 when Windows was directly installed on the SSD. And now the SSD drive. I have that Samsung 990 Pro SSD, and on bare metal we had 7100 meg read and 6700 write. And these results were pretty close to Samsung claims this, you know, this drive is expected to reach, because it's PCI Express 4.0 SSD drive, and 7400 around that, or something like that, that's the maximum read speed for that. But within the VM, when I had cache configured to write back, and by, by the way, this is the configuration that Proxmox recommends even, when I ran the test, I got pretty weird numbers, because I had 11 gig, so 11,000 megabytes read, and 9,400 meg write, which can't be true, because this exceeds PCI Express 4.0 by 4 maximum speed even, you know, it's 8 gig maximum. So basically this was wrong and I had to fiddle with that a bit and I realized this cache setting, when I used to have write back, it does something weird in the background simply. So when I changed it to default, which means no cache, only then <laughs> the results made sense. Like 7000 for read and uh, 6500 for write, these are the real results and uh, to be honest they're pretty impressive. I didn't expect those results to be so close to when we run natively, but that's good. And now the 3D Mark, I mean, we had a score of 3000, but unfortunately here, on this emulated GPU, this test does not run simply. It just says, your PC is unable to run this test. What I could run though, was the benchmark for Ultra Street Fighter 4. And when we run it natively, and we use that Intel Arc 130T graphic card, integrated graphic card, we had around 80 FPS, constantly, and we can see the score was close to 6000, 5889, and average FPS, let's say 80 frames per second. And you can see graphic adapter Intel Arc 130T, it was detected correctly. So I tried to match all the settings, unfortunately for resolution, maximum resolution is smaller even than full HD, and I couldn't increase it, but everything uh, else was roughly the same, you can see the result is <laughs> pathetic, we get like uh, 7 frames per second. But remember, please, uh, we don't compare the same things. Here, basically, we don't have graphic card. It's a CPU rendering all the frames, because I didn't pass through the graphic card. So basically, graphic card doesn't do anything. It's just CPU doing all the job. And you can see the score six times lower, and average FPS six. And the graphic adapter, it says Microsoft Basic Render Driver. And I knew it was a long shot, but because I tested Cyberpunk in the previous video, and we had around 20 something FPS, like in the results we can see 23.28. Unfortunately here, I tried to run it, and it looked like it wanted to run, but uh, something in the background was happening, preventing it from start. So uh, I didn't try to troubleshoot that because I would probably see like a one frame per second anyways. But just wanted to show you what happens when I click that play button in the Steam application. I hope that's helpful. And yes, CPU and SSD, the results were perfect. Only the GPU, I will have to work on how to pass it through. I mean, I haven't even tried. Maybe there are no problems at all. I will have to try simply and I will let you know shortly. So, see you later.